my nice new brother WP1 word processor. I could connect the Raspberry Pi up to the UART. Sadly, this turns out not to be viable. This is a very cheap PSOC 5 development board. And wire that up. We're going to write this in Verilog, by returning 5A, which is the right value. It's kind of vile, but it does seem to at least build. No, nope, it doesn't like that. And we are out of space. So let's run the program, and this should produce 1, 2. 1, 2 it is. We now have nearly all of the Verilog stuff working, and then next time I'm going to work on the actual software side of things. Okay, it is the next day. I am reasonably refreshed. Let's do the software side of things. Now, we have two registers, effectively. We've got, this, uh, of course, we've got the status and control registers. Index zero is going to be the data register. So when the brother writes to this, it's going to be sending a byte. And when it reads from this, it's going to be receiving a byte. Register 1 is going to be the control register. When the brother writes, thank you, Windows. When brother writes to this, it's going to be sending information to the interface about what it's doing. When it reads from this, it's going to be fetching information from the interface. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that there is no way to, where did I put the schematic? There is no way for the bus interface to tell the CPU in the interface when something happens. The interface is just going to have to poll. This is by design as it simplifies things no end. Normal UART, if you write to the data register, this triggers a write in the interface because, of course, the interface knows when it's being written to but the CPU here doesn't, so we're going to have to interlock everything through control bits. Now, we are going to have two state machines for doing the reads and the writes. So let's prepare for this. So this is going to be read state machine. This is for the brother to be reading stuff from the UART. We have the idle state, this is when there is no data in the register waiting to be read and nothing available from the UART. Readable is when there is data in the buffer waiting to be read. Done is when uh, the data has been read. So the flow is that the interface starts in idle, a byte arrives in the UART, the interface puts the data in the buffer and transitions to readable, the brother then reads the data out of the buffer, it then signals to the interface that it's done the read, at which point the interface transitions to done, uh, at which point the brother has to signal the interface that it's acknowledged that the read is done. So there are actually two steps here of to read. The brother has to wait until the interface is in the readable state. It then reads the data. Uh, it acknowledges this so that the interface goes to done. And then the brother acknowledges it again so that it can transition from done back to either idle or readable. The reason for doing two acknowledgements is that uh, the brother can otherwise not distinguish between a transition from the readable state back to the readable state. It doesn't know that another byte is available because when the brother 
set the acknowledge bit that we're about to do to tell the interface it's done the read. It doesn't know when the interface actually handles the, uh, the, the yeah, handles those bits. Hopefully that makes sense. I suspect it may not. Anyway, let's do the acknowledgement bit. So read acknowledgement. We have uh, we are acknowledging that data has been read from the buffer. And uh, RA done uh, signifies that the brother has seen that the interface is in the RS done state. Okay, let's go for writing. So we have write state idle. This is going to be when there is nothing in the buffer and we're waiting for the brother to put something there. Um, actually, let's call that writable. This indicates that the data has been picked up out of the buffer and is currently being sent. Uh, and I think that's actually all we need because writing is simpler. So acknowledge bits, we have uh, um, we do know we do actually need a WS done. Because again, uh, we need to be able to transition uh, so the board writes the buffer, it sends a WA data acknowledgement bit, the interface transitions to writing. Yes, we need another acknowledgement bit to force the um, to force the brother to wait for it to be in a state other than writable, so it can transition back to writable and wait for the next byte. So, yeah, let's, let's just do it like this. Okay, so the acknowledgement bits will be placed in the status register by the brother. The uh, enumeration values, actually we'll start, put that at four, that way that these uh, occupy different bit fields and can be just ordered together. So this is zero, one, and two. This is four, five, and six. Okay, let's just make a quick schematic change. So, uh, the brother is going to be sending acknowledgement bits to the interface, and these will arrive here in status reg one. Now, we want the status, we want the acknowledge bits to all be independent. Currently, the value of the register will be captured into the status register directly. 
However, we can set this to sticky. Sticky bits uh, work specially. When a sticky bit is seen as being one, it uh, sets the value in the status register to one. When it's seen as zero, it doesn't change the value. So the status register will now remember any bits that have been set to one. Then they all get read and reset atomically, which is nice. That is exactly what we want for the status bits, because it means that the brother can set any of these bits one at a time, and they will all get accumulated and ORed together. Okay, I think that's fine for the um, for the state machine. So we now actually have to start doing it. Oh yeah, we also need to define some variables to actually put the state in. So we start in as we start the read state machine in idle. We start the write state machine in writable. Okay. So we we loop forever. And the first thing we want to do is to read and reset the acknowledgement bits. We're now going to process the read state machine. So we are in idle mode. If there are any pending bytes in the UART, uh, how do we actually do this? Is it I'm going to have to look at the documentation for that. One nice thing about this SDK is that every component has a datasheet button, which takes us to the description of the datasheet. So, you art. Uh, oh, yeah, APIs. Uh, UART get char receives next data element from receive buffer. Zero indicates an error occurred or no data is present. That's not what we want because we want this thing to be a bit clean. Get byte seems to be slightly different. We, are, uh, we do need to make sure the Rx software buffer is enabled, but otherwise we get the data in the bottom eight bits and one of these things in the upper bits. Okay, so let's make sure we have the buffer enabled. Is that this? I think so. All right, software buffer. So 
Setting RX or TX size greater than the FIFO depth enables usage of the RX and TX FIFO and a circular buffer. Okay, we may have to call a function to enable this. Is there a Set RX buffer size. Uh, I think that might just be for SPI actually. Okay, I couldn't find anything offhand, but it occurs to me there is actually a very easy way around this. So we know that the uh, the UART is going to be writable if the TX buffer size is zero. It's a little bit wasteful because we want to keep the buffer full when as, as often as possible because that will mean that the UART will be writing stuff in the background, but this should work. So if data has arrived, no, that's wrong. Uh, yeah, the thing is that uh, the acknowledgement bit will be read exactly once so that if the buffer is full then we consume the acknowledgement bit so in fact we want to consume the acknowledgement bit and go straight into writing Writing is then going to wait for the transmit buffer to empty. And then it is going to transition, well, it's going to So we read the byte from the register and then we send it to the UART, which we know is going to be non-blocking because the buffer is empty. And then we transition into done. And then in done, we wait until we see the acknowledge bit and then transition back to writable. Okay, so the brother is going to write the data into the data register, set the WA data acknowledge bit. The interface will then transition to writing, then transition to done. The brother then waits until it sees the done state and then acknowledges that and it transitions back to writable waiting for the next byte. Yikes. Okay. Um, actually, that is also not my copyright message. Let's remove that. Why do we need a comment saying it's the end of the file? Okay, I think that is it. So now we want to go back to the workbench and actually try it, I think. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's program it. Oops. Done. Yep, over to the workbench. Okay, here we are at the workbench and in an amazing video editing tour de force, I have both the output from the brother and also the serial terminal output captured, I hope, from my little laptop. So we should be able to see everything. And in the middle, I have a cheat sheet with the various bit values on it. So here we are in BBC Basic. We should be able to print the value of the status register and we get four, thus indicating that we are in write state writable and read state idle, which is exactly what we expect to see. So let's try and write a byte. To do this, we need to write a byte to port 40. And I realized I now I can't remember the syntax for how to do this. Uh, equals 40, uh, 65 rather. Comma 65. Okay, so we've written a byte. We now need to transition. We now need to acknowledge that we've done this by doing put 41, comma, WA data is 4. And nothing has happened. So I'd expect to see the byte show up in the uh, uh, in the serial terminal. So what state are we in? We are back in writable. Okay, it thinks it's done something. Hmm. So I wonder what has happened. We can't capture from manual testing like this. We can't capture the actual um, all the states. But one thing I can try is putting the cursor in the serial terminal and typing something. Just one key. And let's see if it's transitioned to the readable state. It has. So now we should be able to read the byte, which was a 6B. So if I print that, that is indeed the character I typed. We now want to acknowledge that we've read it. Should now have transitioned into, it is still in readable. It should have moved on to done. Okay, so what we can see from this is that a lot of it is working, but there's something wrong with the state machine. And of course, you know what this means. Back to the desktop. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Now we tried the right state. We tried to, we wrote a byte to reg zero. And then we wrote a four, which is one shifted left two. This should be one, two, four, eight. Hmm. I wonder if something we're doing is dropping all the acknowledge bits. That would make sense, actually. 
let's just double check this. So we put this into sticky. Let me just double check what sticky does. Goes high on the writing edge of clock, goes low after the status register is read. In this mode, the associated routing edge is sampled in each cycle in the status of the status and control clock. If the signal is high, it is captured in the status bit and remains high. When the CPU firmware reads the status register, the bit is cleared. So if we're in, so we should be in writable. We set the acknowledge bit. This means that it will show up in this loop precisely once and it should hit this and switch states. Once we're in writing, we are then attempting to actually send the byte, at which point we switch to the done state. Okay, well, we can put some debugging in. Okay, now what happened here? We read the byte and it trans transitioned to readable. But then we either never saw it transitioned done or it went done and then back through idle to readable again. So again, let's add some tracing. The thing I'm worried about is if we were to read one of the acknowledge bit, if we could read the acknowledge status register when we're in the wrong state, we will lose the bits. So let us program this and back to the workbench. Okay, it's programmed, so let's read the status register state four. We're waiting for write data. So let us give it what it wants. Give it some data. Acknowledge that we've done the data. And indeed, we see nothing show up on the serial terminal. So it has not switched states. Interesting. Let's try typing something. We're going with our K again. Right. It transitioned from idle to readable. We can now read our byte. And we acknowledge it with sending it a one and nothing happened. Okay, I think all our acknowledge bits are being dropped, which is interesting. Okay, so that 
that is happening through this logic. Now I spent a lot of time fiddling with this so it's entirely possible it's wrong. The way this is supposed to work is the decoded wire indicates whether uh, an I.O. transaction at the right register is happening. Every clock cycle we look to see if we are now decoded but weren't by recording the old state of decoded in this reg. This means that this will only ever trigger on positive edges of decoded. Then we say, is this a right transaction? If so, actually copy the data to the output reg. And the outputs are wired to the status registers. It also occurs to me that because reg1 here is sticky and reg0 is not, reg1 is taking care of remembering the result. So I think that we don't want output 1 here to be registered. I mean, nothing looks too bad about this code. I wonder if it's possible for the status register to sample the result. I think only in sticky mode. We could implement our own latch, but that's basically just doing what reg does. Yeah, that's not going to work. The reason why is that output 1 here being registered will retain its value and keep asserting it. So after we read the value from the status register, then the value gets reset to back to 0. But because output 1 is still asserting the old value, it will immediately get the acknowledge bit set again. So in fact, we can't do it like that. So we're going to have to be a little bit different. We're going to need to add a another output terminal. Do we? See, I'm I'm wondering if we if we need to add uh, output enable lines for output zero and output one. So that this now becomes data write output enable and each of these gets its own then output zero goes through a latch and I think we have some we've got a bunch of flip-flops here I think we want a D an 8-bit wide D flip-flop with enable bit so that when the enable bit is set it will capture the value coming in on D and emit it in Q so the status register is now pointing at Q uh, enable becomes the output enable line and clock is a clock okay generate the Verilog yes we then need to update some stuff of course, that's removed the regs from my outputs, but I wanted them removed anyway. Uh, data read OE is decoded an RD. So output zero, can we do this in combinatorial logic? Output Wait a minute, the outputs are always going to be the data lines. Like always. So we don't actually need these. The only thing we care about is data R here. Ugh. 
So if index is zero, we want to enable output naught enable. Otherwise, we enable output one. So if this is a leading edge, set one of the, so if this is a leading edge and we're doing a write, enable one of the OE lines. Otherwise, clear them. In fact, can we do it like this? I don't think we can. These do need to be uh, registered. No, they don't. Output enable becomes if we are writing and index is false, it becomes one, otherwise zero. Okay, that is actually much simpler code. I don't know if it'll work, but uh, we also want to save our symbol, go down to the schematic and do some work. So let's break that line. Output zero needs to be sticky. Well, not sticky, but it needs to remember the value that we programmed into it. So that means it's got to go through the flip-flop. Uh, output enable goes to the flip-flops enable line. The data line is connected to the data in. Oh yeah, and we also want the clock to be a clock. Right, what do we do here? Well, this one is our sticky one. So we connect up the input uh, we, however, do not want a clock there. We want a AND gate.
and this is only going to be so that this will only get clocked when output one output enable is set does that build routing of asynchronous signal microcell queues a clock to UDP component what these error messages, really. 582. I bet that's this one. No, this one. This one. We don't need a clock here or an AND gate because we're going to use the output one as a clock. What we do, however, need to synchronize it with the system clock, which we use one of these for. So that we get a pulse out here and this will force it to be in the right clock domain for this thing. And let's do that. Okay, how are we doing for resource usages? usage? Yeah, this has dropped a lot. We went from 50 down to 36. However, the sync thing here uses up a status register, which is why this has gone up to three. Okay, that's programmed. Is that programmed? It's programmed now. Let's see if this works. Okay, I added some more tracing just to log the acknowledge bits whenever they are non-zero should we sh so we should be able to see the act bits actually show up and they do not so i think that the uh by status registers are not working so that would be a job for the bus interface I think okay let's do some debugging the proper way to debug this is with a logic analyzer but uh, that would require even more video capture stuff so let's try using the LED first because there's an LED it's on port 1.6 it's very simple if it's if the port is energized the LED goes on so let's add a Wrong button. Let's add a digital output pin. Call it LED. Strong drive is what we want. Go to pins. Map this to port four point one. We've got wait a minute that's the port 1.4 wait port 1.6 I'm going mad port 1.6 here we go and we are going to create a toggle flip-flop which we're going to wire up to this Copy the clock and connect this to our register one output enable. That means every time the output enable goes high, it will toggle the state of the LED. Then should let us see whether you know the output enable is actually working and tell us whether our problem is in the bus interface here or whether the status register is not working the way I expected. 
Let's look at the, yep, we're in the right, uh, we are in the right mode. Let's try and switch to another mode by acknowledging the read and nothing happens. Fantastic. We are stuck in mode four. Let's try acknowledging data. Yep, that's not doing anything at all. Uh, typing in the serial terminal still switches us to readable, and I bet this has gone to state five. Yeah, but if we uh, try it, if we acknowledge the read with RA data, we see nothing happen. Okay, I think our acknowledge bits are just not making it through for some reason. So why is the question? So we know that decoding works, and we know that index works, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to read bytes. And we actually saw all this working before. And admittedly, that was before I rewrote everything. So I bet it's this stuff. This is the thing that's doing the, uh, that's testing for a pos edge on the right signal. So let's add, I'll put terminal. Let's add another output terminal, which we're going to call debug, except not in capitals. Debug. Uh, oh, yeah. Generate Verilog. Yes. There's our debug. And we're going to assign debug to CPU write pause edge. And in our schematic, save all, we are going to connect up. debug to our flip-flop. So the LED should change state every time debug goes high, which should happen on every pause edge. So program. Okay, that is not it. That is in fact a power LED. The user LED is here and is actually labeled port 1.6. So we want to output to port 41 A1, what happens? Nothing. Okay, our bus interface is faulty. Well, the LED works. I have also wired it up to the decoded line so that every time the uh, something accesses ports 40 or 41, then, then nothing happens. Interesting. Uh, interesting. Why did writing a zero do nothing? Now it is doing something. That's inter interesting. That suggests that this is sometimes not decoding properly. Either that or the flip-flop's not working. And in fact, let's just put in a little program so that we can just do run
well, it's, it didn't flip then. Yeah. Okay. I think something is wrong with the bus interface. It's not capturing values correctly. But why? After a lot of tinkering, I think I have something working. So let's give it a proper test. So if I run my program, which writes zero to the act bit, I can see light toggle on and off, which indicates that the output enable is working. So let's try and do that right again. So what we need to do is write our byte to uh, actually, before we do anything, let's just make sure that we're in the right state. That should be a four. It's a six. What does six mean? Uh, six means that the read state is done. It thinks it's read a byte into the buffer. Okay, that's fine. That's four plus two is six. So let's just go ahead with the write. Oops. Uh, so write 65 into the output buffer. And we want to set the data ACK bit. And we can see that it has the, uh, the ACK bit logging in the serial terminal means it's actually fetched the uh, my act bit assignments are all overlapping because WS writable is four and WS done is six but four plus two is six so RS done and WS writable produce six which is WS done I'm going to have to fix that Okay, well, that was really stupid. Um, I'd use 0, 1, and 2, and 4, 5, and 6. So I'd started the writable bits at 4 rather than starting them at bit, at the bit representing 4. So the real value should be 0, 4, 8. And I've also changed the code and done the reprogramming to match. Okay, let's try our write again. So we write our byte to the output port. Then we signify that we are that we want to actually write it by using ACBIT4. And yes, you can see on the terminal it transitioned from writable to writing. Then it printed the A and then it transitioned from writing to done which is correct. So if I read the state, we're now at state eight, which is WS done. That is completely correct. So we now write the act bit to tell it that we've seen the done, which is eight. And it transitions back to writable, waiting for the next character. Fantastic. Okay, so now let's type in a letter on the keyboard of the terminal that is. So it's gone from RS idle to RS readable. So we can read the data buffer, which is 107, that's the lowercase k. I can prove that. Like so. Uh, we then need to acknowledge that we've read it by you sending ACKBIT1. Uh, let's use the right character. Yep, and it's transitioned from readable to done. And then we acknowledge that we have seen the 
uh, the done by sending ack bit two. And it transitions back to idle, which is correct. I think this might work. Fantastic. Okay. So uh, I think I will call it for that session. I will remove the tracing. The next step is to actually write some backend code to do something more useful than uh, so backend code. Write some code for the board, the brother machine, to do something more useful than me having to poke it with DBC Basic. I'm going to do a very simple terminal emulator. And then we will see what happens. Actually, I completely forgot to explain what I did to fix it, which is I simplified things even more by removing the clock dependency. So it's now all completely asynchronous logic. In fact, I can probably take the clock out now. And in order to uh, treat, in order to handle the leading edge of write bus operations correctly, I've added these edge detectors. With these are attached to the output enable lines and they take care of generating a single pulse whenever the output enable line goes high. So we end up sampling the data bus here and here only when the bus transaction actually starts. So none of that is happening inside the, the Verilog stuff and it's, uh, it's added a couple of macro cells, one for each edge detector, but we've dramatically simplified the number of p-terms. So I will just do one t more test offline to make sure that I didn't break anything in moving the tracing, and then next time we'll come back with some Z80 machine code.